So uh, we talked about the different types of second order differential equations in the last class and we talked about what kind of solutions you can have. Now uh, in this class I will be focusing on homogeneous second order ODEs and uh, writing solutions in terms of basis functions. We already saw a bit of this in the last class and uh, what I will what I'll do today is actually formalize some of the th things that you saw in the last class. So, so let us get back to our homogeneous second order differential equation. So, I will write it in the following form. I will write y double prime plus a of x y prime plus b of x y equal to 0. So, this is our homogeneous second order differential equation okay. and uh, what you can what you can see is that suppose you have this differential equation and let me remind you that y prime equal to dy by dx and y double prime equal to d square y by dx square. Okay. So, suppose you have a differential equation like this and uh, let us say if y1 of x is a solution. of differential equation. So, if y1 of x is a solution of this differential equation, okay, that means this implies that y1 double prime plus a y1 prime plus b y1 equal to 0 and I have suppressed the dependence on x. I have all these are functions of x, but I am not writing the explicit dependence on x. So, if y1 is a solution, then uh, it must satisfy this that is why it is a solution okay. Then you can see that uh, a constant times y1 of x is also a solution okay. That means, that means I can multiply y1 by a constant and I will get another solution. Okay, which is also a valid solution and you can you can see this because so so suppose I had uh, c y 1 okay. now uh, c y 1 the whole thing prime the derivative of this is nothing but uh, c times the y 1 prime and you have c y 1 double prime is nothing but c times y 1 double prime. So, now, now if I take this differential equation and uh, instead of y1 I, I replace it by c times y1 then where I have y1 double prime I will have c times y1 double prime where I have y1 prime I will have c times y1 prime and where I have uh, y1 I will have c times y1. Okay. So, if I make this substitution okay, then uh, clearly c times y1 double prime plus a of x into c times y1 prime plus b of x into c times y1 equal to 0 or c y1 is a solution of differential equation. Okay. So, so what that means is that if y1 is a solution then any any constant multiplied by y1 is also a solution. Okay. So, that means you can have many solutions with, with different uh, constants. Okay. Now, next uh, suppose y1 and y2 are solutions. that is that is uh, so if both these are solutions that means you will have y1 double prime plus a y1 y1 prime plus b y1 equal to 0 and if y2 is a solution so you have y2 double prime plus a y2 plus a y2 prime plus b y2 equal to 0. So, you have both these conditions. 
Now uh, you can see that if I just add them, okay, then I will get uh, y1 plus y2 double prime plus A times y1 plus y2 prime plus B times y1 plus y2 equal to 0 or in other words y1 plus y2 is also a solution. Okay. So, so basically if you have two functions y1 and y2 which are solutions of the differential equations of this homogeneous differential equation, you add them up you will get another solution and we already saw that if you multiply any of them by a constant you get another solution. So, this leads us to the important idea that that my solution if I take C1 y1 plus C2 y2 okay, is this will also be a solution. of d e that is provided y 1, y 2 are solutions. Okay. So, so, what that means is that if I have one solution y 1, if I have another solution y 2, okay, then I can write a third solution which is a linear combination of these two. Okay. And in fact, uh, in fact you can say that uh, the general solution y of x can be written as a linear combination of y1 of x plus c2 y2 of x. So, you can write a general solution as a linear combination of as, as these two solutions. So, so, if you have two solutions you can write a general solution has a linear combination and this you notice has two arbitrary constants. Okay. So, so we already learnt that if you have a second order differential equation the general solution will have two arbitrary constants. So, if you know two solutions y1 and y2 you can write a general solution then what I mean by these two solutions do not have any arbitrary constants. So, if y1 and y2 do not have any arbitrary constants okay, then you can write a general solution as a linear combination of these and I will have my two arbitrary constants. So, so the question is, is this valid for any y1 of x and y2 of x that solve de. So, so that means can you use any two solutions and write the general solution as a linear combination of those two solutions and uh, the answer is uh, no. So, you can take any two solutions, you can take a linear combination, you will get a solution. Okay. But, but in order for this solution to be a general solution, okay, in order to get a general solution the important thing is that y1 and y2 should be linearly independent. Okay. So, in order, in order for y equal to c1 y1 plus c2 y2 to be a general solution of d e and when I say a general solution of d e I what I what I imagine is that any other solution of the d e can be written by by choosing c 1 and c 2. Okay. So, you can write any other solution by choosing c 1 and c 2 appropriately. Okay. So, in order for this to be a general solution of the of the differential equation y 1 of x and y 2 of x should be linearly independent. Okay. Or in other words y 2 of x is not equal to some constant alpha times y 1 of x. So, y 2 should not be proportional. So, these two are functions and two functions are linearly independent if you cannot write one as a multiple of the other then you say that they are linearly independent. Okay. So, now these two solutions, so, uh, so what we have right here is you have many possible solutions okay, 
So, you can think of a, this as a vector space of solutions. Okay. And uh, why, why, are, why are we using the vector space? Because you can take you can add solutions, you can multiply them by a constant and you will still get a solution. So, the set of solutions will form a vector space and uh, y1 of x and y2 of x can, can be a basis for this solution. Basis for this vector space. Okay. So, uh, so if they are linearly independent, if y1 and y2 are linearly independent, then they can be a basis for this space of solutions. Okay. So, uh, so uh, this is a vector space of solutions of the differential equation. So, so it is a vector space of functions which solve the differential equation. Okay. And this vector space of functions will have a basis of two functions which are sol which are also solutions of the differential equation but which are linearly independent okay so 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 just to show you again we had the differential equation uh, y double prime plus a times y prime plus b times y equal to 0 and this is a homogeneous linear second order differential equation and uh, i said a and b are functions of x Okay, so, they can be any functions, it is still a homogeneous linear second order differential equation and this has a feature that if you know two, if, if you have two linearly independent solutions y1 of x and y2 of x, then you can write a j, you can write any solution as a linear combination of those two solutions. Okay. So, this is extremely nice because you see a connection between between the, what we were talking in terms of basis fun, ba, basis vectors for a vector space and solutions of a differential equation. Okay. And uh, remember this is only valid for, this is only for homogeneous equations. Okay, so, so, so you can only do this if the equation is homogeneous. If the equation is not homogeneous, you cannot Suppose I suppose y1 is a solution, there is no guarantee that c y1 will be a solution. Okay? So, so this is not true for any equation. So, for, for any arbitrary equation, you cannot, you won't have that uh, c y1 is also a solution if y1 is a solution. Okay? This is only for homogeneous differential equation. Okay? Okay. So, now, uh, now uh, let us uh, illustrate another another interesting idea for homogeneous equations okay so sometimes we may find we may find one solution okay so you have a differential equation let me let me just write the differential equation so, you may find one solution. So, our differential equation is y double prime plus a y prime plus b y equal to 0 and uh, y 1 is a solution. Okay. Now, the question is can we find y 2 which is a linearly independent solution. So, we want to find another solution, okay. you want to find, so you have one solution, okay. you want to find the second linearly independent solution, so that you can write any solution, a, a general solution as a linear combination of these two, these two solutions. Okay. And the answer is yes, you can find it. Okay. Uh, the method that you do is, uh, is called variation of parameters. Okay. So, what you say is, uh, so you try y2 is equal to u which is a function of x times y1. So, so remember all these are functions of x. So, y2 is a function of x, u is a function of x and uh, y1 is also a function of x. 
okay. So, uh, sometimes I will not write the explicit dependent on x, but, but here I want to emphasize that u is a function of x okay just as y1 and y2 are also functions of x so 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 suppose you try a solution of this form okay so then uh, what is uh, y2 prime is u y1 prime plus u prime y1 y2 double prime okay so that is a second derivative of y2 now again again so that is a derivative of this of this quantity of the first derivative Okay. So, so if you take the derivative of the first term you will get u y1 double prime plus u prime y1 prime and then if you take the derivative of this uh, second term you will get plus u prime y1 prime plus u double prime y1. Okay, so, you have these four terms and uh, you can see that these two terms are identical. Okay, so, so, I can write this as u y1 prime double prime plus 2 u prime y1 prime plus u double prime y1 okay. So, all I did was I had y equal to u times y2 is u times y1 okay. Then y2 prime I write by the usual product rule and y2 double prime also I write by the usual product rule. And now I substitute in the differential equation because y2 has to be a solution of this differential equation. So, when you substitute in the differential equation what do you get? So, uh, so for y2 double prime I will put all these terms. So, I will have uh, u y1 double prime plus 2 u prime y1 prime plus u double prime y1 plus a times u y1 prime plus a times u prime y1 plus b times u y1 equal to 0. So, since it has to satisfy the differential equation since we want y2 to satisfy the differential equation okay we just substitute y2 into this equation and you will get and you will come up with this equation okay. Now, uh, now you look at these terms I will just highlight them in blue. So, I look at this term and then I look at this term and I look at this term. Okay. So, if I add if I if I look at each of these terms has a u okay. so, so, if I write the sum of these terms I have u times y1 double prime plus a times y1 prime plus b times y1 okay. and you can immediately see that the term in the brackets has to be equal to 0. Okay. So, therefore, these 3 terms will add up to 0. Okay. And uh, if you if you set these 3 terms to 0 then you are left with only the 3 remaining terms. Okay. So, what are the 3 remaining terms? So, you have uh, 2 u prime y 1 prime plus u double prime y 1 okay. and uh, you have plus uh, a u prime y 1 equal to 0 okay. And uh, what I see is that there is no u term in this. So, there is no u term. So, I can just write this as u double prime y 1 is equal to minus of now, now I will write it as a y 1 plus 2 y 1 prime into u prime ok. So, so what I can do is I can I can bring the u double prime to the left hand side and and what I will get is uh, so, so I will say let capital U is equal to u prime ok. So, I will just call it capital U and uh, the reason will become obvious because now uh, capital U prime equal to u double prime ok. So, then you will get uh, u prime I will write this as u prime by u is equal to minus a y 1 plus 2 y 1 prime divided by y 1 ok. Now, now you can immediately see the where we are going with this 
I don't want to do too much further. You have essentially separated u and x. Okay. So remember, y one is a function of x that you know. Okay. So so we know we know the solution. So y one is a solution that we know, and from y one we wanted to find y two. Okay. And uh, what we did was we we used a trial form of y two is u times y one. Okay, and uh, what we said is that uh, when you substitute in this, then you get this relation. Okay, now you can immediately write this as uh, if you integrate both sides. Okay, you will get a you will get the relation that looks like uh, looks like the following. So so uh, integral of this is natural log of u is equal to minus integral a plus 2 y 1 prime by y 1 dx. A is a function of x remember, A is a function of x. So, so I just integrated both sides with respect to x and I got this. So, so I just wrote these terms explicitly. Okay. But the, the point is that you know y 1, okay. so you can calculate y 1 prime and you can do this integral and you know A. Okay. So, essentially you can find out u, okay. so uh, we can find out u and then you from capital U you can find out small u and from small u you can find out y2. Okay. So, uh, so, so, so I will just write it. So, can solve for u okay. and from u you go to uh, from capital U you go to small u which is just uh, integral of u dx okay. and then and then from u you can go to y 2 is equal to u y 1. So, what, what does this show? This shows that if you have one solution of the homogeneous differential equation, you can go to you can get to the second solution. Okay. So, so uh, what this shows is that you know the power of uh, homogeneous equations is that uh, even if you just have one solution, you can get to a second solution and that second solution will be linearly independent because u is not a constant okay u is some function of x so the second solution is by design it is linearly independent okay and uh, the second solution being linearly independent you can write a general solution as a linear combination of y1 and y2 okay so so what this says is that all you have to do for a second order different for a second order homogeneous differential equation is to find one solution and then you can find the general solution of this second order homogeneous differential equation. Okay. So, so in the next class I uh, will discuss uh, second order homogeneous differential equation with, with constant coefficients and then I will I'll tell what are the strategies when your second order differential equation is not homogeneous. Okay. So, I will stop here for today.